lesson four, part two, the aorist tense. We're gonna take and uh, go back and take another look again at the overview of our verb tenses and how verb tenses work so that we can figure out how the aorist tense fits into everything. So we've already seen that in Greek and English, verb tenses such as present or imperfect don't just show time, they also show aspect. A verb's tense represents the time when an action happens. A verb's aspect represents the kind of action that happens. So in English, we have three tenses and three basic aspects. We have past, present, and future. Past are things that have happened before now, present things happening now or always, future things that will happen at a later time. For aspects, we have simple, no spe specific kind of action or frequency mentioned. We've used that with the future. Progressive, an action that occurs over time. We've used that with the present and imperfect. And then perfect, an action that is completed. From these three tenses and three aspects, we have nine basic forms of our verb. All nine of these are often called English's verb tenses for simplicity's sake. So simple past, I talk. Simple present, I talk. Simple future, I will talk. Past progressive, I was talking. Present progressive, I am talking. Future progressive, I will be talking. Past perfect, I had talked. Present perfect, I have talked. And future perfect, I will have talked. Now notice how the simple tenses don't tell you much about the kind of action, they just state that the action takes place. That's going to be important because the aorist is a simple tense. The progressive tenses, however, give a feeling of some duration, that this action didn't happen at a specific point in time, but that it took a little while. The perfect tenses, which we won't learn for a little while, are normally used in a sentence with two verbs like, when I was five, I had already learned to read, giving the idea of something being completed. The had learned was already completed when the was five happened. All right, now in Greek, Greek has six main verb tenses, which include both tense and aspect. Eris, which is a simple past tense. Now, it can also be used for the simple present, but we're not going to worry about that. Imperfect, which we've already learned, is a past progressive. Pluperfect is a past perfect. Present is a present progressive tense. And it can be used for the simple present, but again, we're not going to worry about that. Perfect is a present perfect tense. And then the future is a simple future, which can also sort of be used for a future progressive. All right, now let's look at the aorist. With all that in mind that we know already about our verb tenses and how they function, what about the aorist? The aorist tense is the simple past tense. We already have a past progressive with the imperfect, giving the idea of duration. This is just the normal everyday basic past tense, the aorist. Technically speaking though, it can be used for the present or future as well, because the main idea of the aorist is that it's punctiliar or undefined. It is not a progressive tense. Punctiliar means it's like a point, so this happens at a point in time. It doesn't happen over the course of time. It's not progressive. Or undefined here means we don't care. We don't care if it's progressive or at a point in time. We're just talking about the action. So it could have taken time for it to happen, but we're not focusing on that. We're just saying that it happened in the past and the focus is somewhere else. Our purposes, however, we will always consider aorist to be the simple past tense. But if you're actually analyzing the New Testament or some other Greek documents, know that it could be a simple present or a simple future. But for our purposes, we're just gonna go with the past tense for simplicity's sake. All right, that means that for the aorist active, if the verb is regular in English and not something weird, the translation will end with ed. Oh, don't forget that tons of English verbs aren't regular. So that means the only thing we need, no helping verbs, nothing extra, just ED. That's it. We will always translate the aorist active without a helping verb, unless the verb has a negative, in which case we'll end up with something like did not go or did not come. But assuming it's not negative or a question, we're always going to translate it without a helping verb. No helping verbs for aorist actives unless we've got something really strange going on. The aorist is unusual in Greek because there are two different ways to form the aorist tense. This is sort of like how there are different declensions. They mean the same thing, 
but the different words follow different patterns. So we basically have two different patterns of how to make the aorist. Some verbs will follow the first pattern and some verbs will follow the second pattern. We have what is called first aorist and second aorist. They mean the exact same thing. Get that in your head now. They mean the exact same thing. I'm going to say it again because this is important. They mean the exact same thing. They just follow different patterns. There are two different patterns. Some verbs follow one pattern. Some verbs follow the other pattern. They both are the aorist tense. They both mean the same thing. They both are a simple past tense. Summary, the aorist tense is the simple past tense. The first aorist and second aorist mean the exact same thing. They just follow different patterns. Do you think maybe that's important? The aorist active will usually be translated into English with an ED if the verb is regular. The aorist active will always be translated without a helping verb unless it's a negative or the question. <laughs>